Hello and welcome for joining. Uh, thank you for joining us in this info session, Your Future in Computer Science. Um, we, here we are talk about, uh, to talk about the master's programs at, at TU Graz uh, in the areas of IT. If you are uh, biomedical engineering, uh, there will be a session afterwards where you can join us. Um, if you have any questions, uh, write them directly here on YouTube or uh, ask them in the Discord channel, which is linked below. Robotics, artificial intelligence, visual computing, and much more. In the bachelor's degree program in computer science, you will learn all about computer technologies and how to shape our digital future through IT. Focus areas such as software engineering, data science, machine learning, IT security, and many others offer a well-balanced and diverse education. Let's hear what our students say about it. IT is everywhere and it becomes more and more important. It is fascinating to learn how we can improve our everyday lives by means of information technology. IT security is a hugely dynamic topic. At TU Graz we learn from the best in their fields, with a great international reputation, even while still in the bachelor's degree program. Here at TU Graz the student teams are very successful in international game development, hacking or RoboCup competitions. Interested? Head over to tugratz.at and apply for admission to the bachelor's program in computer science now. Hello and welcome back. I'm sorry we had some technical difficulties. Um, my name is Martin Haider. I'm going to be the host today. And how about we introduce ourselves? Maybe starting here. So my name is Benjamin Giegel. I'm a data scientist at Siemens Energy and just graduated the new CSS master program. And yeah, we will hear later. My name is Liz Bora. I'm doing software engineering and management master's program at Dograz. and AI and I'm one of the deans of studies. So you're the dean of studies. Um, what exactly does this mean? What is the dean at TU Graz? Okay, so uh, there are several deans, as I said before. It's not only me, there's others one. Um, we are responsible for the uh, execution of the studies according to the Austrian law, uh, the curriculum, and uh, also the regulations of the university. And uh, mainly you have to do with us at the beginning because we are responsible for the admission, in particular if you came from overseas or from outside the European Union. Um, then during the studies, usually we are working on, if you go abroad, to, to do the recognition of courses you did abroad. And finally, um, I'm involved in finishing the thesis. And finally, I have the pleasure to sign your certificate at the end. Interesting. So a lot of uh, a lot of stuff to do for you. Um, what what degree programs do you uh, offer at your faculty? Uh, basically, we have five of them at our faculty. Uh, two we are uh, making solo. That means only our faculty. That's uh, computer science, which is a core, more theoretical uh, computer science uh, study. Then we have. Um, software engineering or software development and economy, which is more on the practical side. Um, and then we have um, three studies we are doing together with uh, partners, which in our university and also other university. So there's um, information and um, computer engineering, which is done together with the electrical engineering faculty. 
which is more on the combination between electrical engineering and uh, computer science. Uh, the next one is digital engineering, where we have also the mechanical engineering department involved, which is a complete, uh, yeah, uh, about digitalization of the engineering. And then we have, as mentioned before, uh, computer social uh, systems, which is uh, executed together with the Graz uh, University, where we have the non-technical parts there. So a lot of social science is involved there. A lot of them, yes. All right, maybe I have some questions for you, Elis Bora. Um, you're studying the master's program software engineering management right now. Um, how do you like it? <laughs> I really like the program. I think it's a very good combination of two highly correlated fields, such as software engineering and management. And I think this is one of the, uh, Tograd is one of the few universities that offers uh, such a program in English in Europe. Um, so, you're only speaking English right now, um, where are you from? I am from Albania, so I did my bachelor's in Albania in business informatics and I moved to Graz two years ago for my master's studies. And uh, how do you like it? So, is it, did it work, the coming here and starting out? Yes, um, for international students and especially for students that are not in the um, that come from countries that are not in the European Union. The admission procedure is a bit more complicated, um, but still um, can happen and happens. Um, first of all, uh, the procedure is, um, is divided into some steps. All international students that come from non-EU um, countries need to go uh, to undergo an admission procedure. And that is open also now at the moment. It's open from 15th of October to 15th of December. So it's open right now. And all students need to submit an online application for that. Once you submit an online application until 15th of December, then you get um, an answer, let's say, from the university after two months on 1st of March, whether you obtained or not a study program and a study place. And after that, you, you will have to submit some documents by post and receive an admission letter. So it might sound a little bit complicated, but it's rather long than complicated. And still, um, and still there is a lot of help from the university as well. It's very well explained in the web page. And we also have the student ambassadors um, for that as well. What exactly are student ambassadors? Yes, yeah, so student ambassadors, and I'm student ambassador of two grads for Albania, are international students of two grads that represent two grads in, the, in their home countries. We are responsible to um, present two grads back home in universities and schools, so make two grads well known um, for our home country, and then also assist students that want to come to two grads and have questions related to application, admission procedure, visa processes, and also connect them with different service points such as um, Welcome Center, International House, or the study department. Okay, so basically when you're going home, you're also doing work. Yes, a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> but do you like it? Yes, I really like it because I had some difficulties um, applying and then uh, coming here to Austria. So it's I think it's really helpful for students back home. And we have, um, I think, ambassadors from eight different, eight different countries. So it's a it's a great help um, for students to get a little bit of a feeling what Tograts feels like before coming here. So did you have an, an ambassador to help you in the start as well? or Not really, because I'm the first ambassador for Albania. Ah, yes. congratulations. <laughs> Thanks. So we got many international students here at Tier Graz, and thank you for the insight. Um, Graz is, uh, so we, we're trying to get a bit of insight um, how studying Graz uh, in Graz is, because Graz is the second largest city of Austria, uh, and we're going to show you a clip about that. That's me at three, here at five, and there at 16. Technology has fascinated me ever since I was a child. It was clear to me early on. I wanted to study, achieve something in life, and work for a better future. I wanted my future to be international with an interdisciplinary focus. Graz University of Technology offers a wide range of degree programs in science and technology. The ideal place for technology enthusiasts like me. I'd made up my mind and it was clear to me where it would start. So I moved to Graz, Austria's second city, my first home of my own, my new home base. Graz is so lively and exciting. It was a whole new feeling for me. So much culture. A green city, a student city, so many new faces, sounds, 
smells, and impressions. So many things to see and do. And then things really took off. TU Gratz, overwhelming to begin with, located right in the center of town. You can feel it. Research history has been written here for centuries. Everywhere on campus, in all the different faculties and institutes, you can meet with students and lecturers from all over the world. Incredibly large, small, electrifying, smart, green, futuristic, artistic projects. Specialist fields and disciplines I had no idea about. I absorbed and explored everything. These first days at Graz University of Technology opened my eyes to a world with new possibilities, research-led, with a practical focus and innovative learning technologies. I got insights into different fields, learned how they're connected. I got to know great people from various disciplines. We worked together in study groups and celebrated our successes together. We built networks for the future in one of the many student teams and made friends for life. I decided to study at Graz University of Technology, and I'd do it all again. What's your story? Okay, but Graz is not also great for students who are coming here. Uh, we're also trying to get people to study abroad. And Benjamin, you uh, already did a semester abroad. Where exactly were you and how did you like it? So first of all, I made an Erasmus Plus international funding program. And I was in Brazil, exactly in Rio de Janeiro. This was a very nice city also. And I lived there six months, learned the Portuguese language. And of course, yeah, I, I lived near the sea. I was a lot in the beach, I would say, and had great temperatures. But I also um, studied there, so I finished my master thesis also. Okay. Uh, what was the best about <laughs> the abroad semester? So, first of all, I had eight visits from Austria, so a lot of friends. And we made a helicopter tour over um, Rio de Janeiro downtown. I was swimming with over 100 dolphins in the sea, so wild dolphins. This, yeah. Graz has a lot of possibilities, but they, we don't have a sea here. And yeah, I also liked to go to the football stadium. The people were very friendly, so it was a great experience. All right. Uh, so I'm guessing you would recommend that everybody do a semester abroad? I think it's very important, especially when you want to go in an international job. You get a more open mindset and international experience. So I can really recommend it. And yeah, it's important also for the CSS program, as an example, other computer science studies that you also go to other countries, maybe. All right, very interesting. So um, I have questions also for you, Gerald. Uh, what exactly do you think makes Graz a great student city? The name already suggests, right? Uh, Graz is a student city. So we have about approximately 50,000 students overall, or 60. Uh, population is 300,000, so it's clearly that uh, the students and the institutions uh, related to studying uh, define how this is, uh, the, the, the city works and how the city appears. So from that perspective, uh, it's, it's, it's visible that it is a university city. Uh, the, other city uh, the other thing is uh, the size, so it's not too large. It's not like uh, Vienna or any other city which is very large and not very uh, your personal. But it's also not small, it has everything you need. So from that perspective, it's good. Um, and what else? Um, just a half an hour away, you have a lot of nature, so you can go there and uh, enjoy yourself um, from wine yards up to mountains, as everything is around. And obviously also the nightlife is much better than I was a student. <laughs> Maybe, Lisboa, do you also want to add something? So why do you think studying Graz is great? Yes, I would also add to what Benjamin said earlier, Graz is very international. You feel, after some time, you feel at home. Uh, so it's not that difficult to, um, to adapt. And I also really like that beside um, to Graz being an engineering and technology university, it really has a great focus on innovation and entrepreneurship as well. All right. 
Um, maybe I want to talk about studying at TU Graz. Is there uh, anything that the master degrees offer in spe uh, specifically in Graz or? Um, well, Graz, uh, if you study here, the, I think the benefit is that you have a lot of institutions. So you have five universities, you have also some uh, University of Applied Science there's there. There's a research institution also off the university are there. Um, there's a strong economic field around here in particular um, areas like logistics, for example, or automotive. There's a strong economy, which is important, right? If you want to grow and uh, also what uh, Lise Boris says, uh, to get uh, an entrepreneurship uh, yeah, attitude and, and to make your network already. And uh, not forget that we have very nice and very good uh, top researchers in fields where you really can alert, learn from them. So about these research fields, you already talked about what different master degrees are. Can you maybe explain a few differences between them? So, Okay, so um, we offer different um, masters and um, the difference is, I would say, on first, first place is how deep you go into a topic. So if you have a more specialized uh, study, then of course you can go deeper into the topic. Um, the other thing is also the mixture between uh, theory and practice, which is different. Uh, for example, computer science is more theoretical studies, uh, where, for example, software engineering economy clearly uh, looks at the application, right? And you have only the same amount of uh, uh, credits at the end of the day, so you have to trade uh, depth in one field uh, to uh, practice in the other field. Um, and what you also have is um, you can mix your fields, right? Um, for example, in computer, as I said before, in ICE, in um, information and computer engineering, you have parts of electrical engineering there. You work about electricity, motors, electronics, but also you still have the, the parts of computer science. There's a mixture there. Uh, in digital engineering, you also have the mechanical engineering there. And what is a very nice in computer, uh, computational social systems is, for example, you have there people from law or from uh, psychology or phi philosophy. So that's um, a very nice combination you can do. And of course, this defines how your stu studies uh, executed at the end of the day. Uh, but a lot of the studies also uh, make uh, make uh, benef have benefits uh, with the major and minor system. Can you explain a bit about that? Okay, so um, there's a, um, a few lectures you have to do. They are compulsory uh, as a kind of uh, common ground. Uh, and then you have a major, uh, which is a, mm, the major, major part of your study will be in this field. Uh, and then you can specialize there, right? Then we have, for example, uh, um, visual computing, which is about computer vision. Um, we have also theoretical computer science, where you look more into, okay, the foundations and also algorithms. Uh, you have intelligent systems, where it's about AI and uh, how you do decisions or support decisions. Um, we also have um, data, science. data science, not to forget the work with data, um, software engineering. So, okay, what are the bases really you need to know uh, in order to do software? And uh, we are to require the students to have both. So at least two specialization. One is more, that's the major, and then the minor as well. But uh, you're, you're, you should not have a single silo of your studies. So there's a lot of freedom. In, in those courses? There's a lot of freedom. Um, you can really cho choose a very nice combination of courses at the end. Very interesting. Um, what would a prospective student have if they want to start at TU Graz? Okay, um, I think the, the most important, and um, I have to apologize for that, is a, is a good basis from the, from the bachelor. Uh, in particular in uh, computer science and math. Uh, that will be also checked by us for the admission uh, because this makes your life easier when you study later on. Um, the other thing is, of course, but this is usually not a problem as we see here, uh, is good language skills in English because you have to follow the, the lectures and you have to work, to have really work, right? Uh, also your thesis is done there, you have your discussions with your professors and your peers in English, so that's important. Um, this is more personal statement for mine. Um, uh, you should not be afraid to make your fingers dirty. 
and I mean you're really not studying theoretically, you really have to do something. Projects and um, programming and making systems uh, in order to learn it, otherwise you don't do it. And the last thing, and the, the, I think that's the most important, stay curious. Huh? Curiosity is the, is, the, is the number one. If you're not curious, then um, there's no point to study. Very interesting. So um, maybe uh, some question for you again, Benjamin. Uh, which master's program did you choose and how do you like it? So first of all, uh, as I said, I made CSS, which is Computational Social Systems in words, which we already heard. And it was the right choice, I would say, because I made in the Bachelor of Business Administration, but then go more deep dive. And for me, it was great because I have a broader specialization because I also work in that field right now. So you didn't start at Tier Graz, you chose the only the master's yes. here. So you can also study from other fields, like, as I said, business administration, you can come from sociology, psychology, or computer science, of course, we don't have to forget, and also law. So you have uh, pre-studies and then can enroll for CSS. So I also heard you're the very first to graduate from computational social systems. Uh, do you feel special about that? Yes, some people say I'm now a YouTube star, so <laughs> we're also on YouTube. <laughs> but I see it more modestly because we have a lot of students which are just finishing their master thesis. Maybe for new incoming students it's uh, good to know how a graduate can look like. So as you see, I work in a data science field, but I would say yeah, study program is very small, but a lot of people are just finishing right now. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. So oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but get congratulations for finishing. Thanks, thanks. So um, we have uh, exchanged uh, a new guest, uh, Roman. Maybe you want to uh, introduce yourself a bit. Sure. Yeah. So my name is, is Roman Kern. I'm here at the Technical University in Graz. I'm, I'm teaching here as well, and I'm teaching about data science. And also one of my courses is called NLP, where I try to explain how ChatGPT is working. So this is <laughs> this is kind of a, a nice course. Yeah. Um, it, we heard uh, data science. You're the leader mm -hmm. of the data team. Um, yeah. What exactly does that mean? Yeah. So data team is 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 typical for the TU Graz, I would say. Uh, because it's a student team and there are plenty of students teams here at the TO Graz and the data team is one of them and the goal is to bring together students that are that want to go beyond they want to do the extra mile the extra step that they want to do and in this case it's about data science and what we do here in this in this data team um, we try to participate or we not only try but we actively participate in challenges such as Kaggle challenges so Kaggle is a platform where companies can post their data together with a problem and that there are teams worldwide that compete to pr produce the best results, the best solution. And there's a leaderboard and it's always important for us to be kind of more at the top of the leaderboard. And yeah, and I can, I can say quite proudly for the last two uh, competitions we, we competed in, uh, we actually won. Oh, it congratulations. Was, yeah, thank, thanks. Yeah, it's, uh, so one, one was about like um, in Paris, they have these charger stations for electric vehicles and they want to predict when these charging stations are um, um, have problems or don't function fully and they need the prediction algorithm for that based on data and yeah so teams of uh, so students of the data team were invited to travel to, to Paris and get handed over their prize. All right so the data team is something you can do extracurricularly right it's a special uh, special team at Tier Graz uh, we have a lot of those um, where you can also apply everything you've learned in the university. So what career options would uh, graduates from the master's programs have? Maybe you have some in insight in that. Yeah, if, if you just stay with the data team, <laughs> obviously there's, a, as a, there's an interest of the companies um, to, to, get that, to get talent. And they see also the data team as one way to recruit quite, quite good people. Obviously, so we get some some questions from from companies. Hey, can we advertise this to the data team? And yeah, this is one career pathway. You then kind of become a, a data scientist in industry. But I think that advantage of the study as well is that you get a quite a broad spectrum presented. So you get a, a spectrum on one hand as more applied. You learn how to program, how to develop software, and so forth. And you could go the route of being a software engineer somewhere. But you also get 
a totally different angle, like more of a research side of things. You, you, it, you read papers, you produce with your master thesis, it's a scientific work that you produce. So you really get an understanding how research is working. So if, if you say something like science, research is more your king, kind, then you also get that perspective and that might also influence then your decision where you want to end up after the studies. So hopefully a few of them students will also stay at the university as researchers, right? Mm -hmm. um, what, are, what are some skills that you would want from, uh, uh, from people who are starting at Theogods? Yeah, so if you if start a master here, of course, like we already said, like uh, having a bachelor's in computer science really is, 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 is a, a good foundation, so to speak. So, and uh, what we also see then, not only having the, the bachelor is, is an added bonus, so to say, but also remember like the, the basics sometimes is helpful. So certain courses you need really have the basics. And I think back at the beginning of the bachelor where you have maybe some math and, and so forth. This could be depending on how you structure your, your courses could be quite important. I think another advantage is from, depends of course how you design your, your, your study is if you have some experience with programming, software development. This is what I also hear from students is that, um, so maybe depending on uh, what they did, maybe they did some, some mobile development already, and that is quite beneficial then for the projects that they do later on, or some web development could be, if they go with that route, could be beneficial, or if they're just interested into, into programming. And, and speaking from the data science perspective, having experience with Python uh, actually gives you a head start. Right. Uh, you said uh, there is a, a lot of importance um, uh, with having the basics. Is this something uh, that people struggle with or, or are there some, some challenges in that way? Like, uh, what are the challenges? Yeah, yeah, I think we, we need to split here the challenges in, in two parts. Like, like more like, so say the basics challenges in, in skills and so forth. And maybe the soft skills challenges. And so from the feedback, what I get is sometimes the soft skills challenges are bigger than like the, the hard skills, like soft skills. And especially because the study, as we said, is, is quite flexible. So can you give some examples that like what, what are people struggling with? Uh, time management, for, for example. So this is this is something because you have the freedom to design your own studies and which which is great, I think. <laughs> but yeah. it, it also comes with the costs because it's not necessary that each study runs exactly the same. And you have to you decide for yourself when do I do what? When do I do a project? When do I go to a seminar? What is the topic of my master thesis and so forth? And you have to have to yeah, to this to be you you the project manager of your studies. And this is you need to, to structure your week. Uh, you need to, to know when you're going to do what. So especially this, this is a feedback. I recently asked some some students to just like Benjamin, just recently finished. Mm -hmm. And I asked ask him, hey, what, what was the biggest challenge in your study? And all of them said the master's thesis. <laughs> of course, there's a recency bias going on because that is exactly what they did in, in the end. But the master's thesis is really where everything comes together, where you apply everything that you have, maybe not everything that you have learned, but much of what you have learned here. And then it's your project. You have a full semester time for the master thesis and you expect it to really do something which you can be proud of afterwards and this doesn't come easy so this is if you want to be proud of something it yeah it cannot be the easiest thing ever so we have you have one semester yeah. time to work really getting an expert in the field reading the literature uh, gets your hand dirty on some practical projects and you really solve a hard problem and then you write it down as a, as a master thesis so this is this is kind of, for some people this is a challenge Mm -hmm. A rewarding challenge, if I may say so. <laughs> I guess. Um, do you have any tips how to overcome these challenges, or uh, what, what exactly can you tell the people? Yeah. So, having a plan at the beginning, for for example, when we talk about like a master thesis, if you want to make that. So, having a plan at the beginning, how you want to structure it, how you how you which kind of milestones do you expect, and have a realistic understanding what needs to be done and when. And of course, you can then talk with your supervisor, give, and he or she will then give you some insights whether this is realistic or not. And especially when we talk about data science, it's, it's kind of, it's a natural order to that, what you can do. First, you need data. <laughs> and this is typically one of the first steps. You organize your data, you look into the data, you have to pre-process the data and, and to make it work. And then you can, can work on the fun part and then do apply data science methods on, on it. But it really comes down of, of being organized 
and, and try to plan, maybe plan your week, uh, have, have some milestones, get it structured. So this is really where you can, can get the most out of it. Uh, Benjamin, you recently uh, finished, right? Uh, is this something you agree with? Or how did you overcome your biggest challenges? Uh, this was a good point, as um, Roman Kern said. So first of all, my main challenge was also the master thesis, because it's a big project, especially in my master thesis, I would say the availability of data and how you get your data. So data cleaning was very time consuming. Uh, in the whole data science lifecycle, it took me about 70% of my data, uh, of my time. So for the cleaning, and I had some expert meetings. I had um, probably a master thesis is a going a deep dive. So very specific, a use case, especially with a company. But I think I managed the challenge very good because uh, my supervisor is sitting <laughs> next to me. And yeah, we also write, uh, write a paper, which we will publish. So in December in Singapore on the EEEE conference, and I learned writing scientific papers, so you get a very good field for research also after the studies. <clears throat> um, looking back, do you, how do you feel about uh, your decision to study CSS? Is it something you really enjoyed or did you say uh, maybe it wasn't the best choice? For me it was the right choice, I would say, because I was interested in the field, but I didn't have a study program or some expertise. And I could recommend the people because it's a very unique program here in Europe because computational social systems, as I said, um, is, or there are a lot of challenges in digital societies. And you look um, like artificial intelligence, there's a law perspective, the psychology perspective and so on. And I think it's very good because you have up-to-date um, topics which you work. So I can really recommend it. And you have it here in Theo Graz since two years, so it's very new. All right, Lisboa, uh, what topics did you learn in, in your studies here? Yes, I'm also doing my major in data science. <laughs> so we are a data science team here. Um, I, I also really liked and enjoyed very much um, learning about human-centered AI. And I'm also very interested on topics related to innovation and entrepreneurship. And as I mentioned earlier, this is a very highly focused topic at Tograds. All right. Um, what did you like most about your master's degree until now? I think the thing that I liked most, but it was also the most challenging thing, is what Professor Roman said. So being able to manage um, and organize my own studies, as it was mentioned also before, um, the master's is software engineering and management, but you can choose to sh specialize in a specific major and that doesn't have to be software technology. It can be data science, it can be cybersecurity, it can be games engineering, it can be everything. So you are very free to combine the major and the minor based on your interests. And I think this is a very cool thing. All right. And do you like it here in Graz? Uh, do you enjoy it? Uh, what's, what's your favorite thing to do in the in free time? Yes, I really like Graz. Um, it was, uh, yeah, it was a change for me when I came here. Um, I needed a little bit of time to adapt. Um, but I don't think Graz is very different from where, from where I come from in terms of size. So I feel very, um, it was very easy for me to learn um, to learn where are the places to go in Graz. Um, and I really like uh, spending my time exploring Graz more or walking by the moor. So these are my favorite things to do. <laughs> All right. Um, we also have a special guest uh, right now. So Yasmin Hus, who is uh, working in the international office with uh, international students, uh, has also uh, a role at the Theo Graz. Maybe, maybe you want to explain uh, yourself what you do. Yeah. Um, so my name is Jasmine Hus. I work in the Wacom Center and we take care of international students, staff and guest researchers that come to TUGATS. And with students, we mean not exchange students who are here only for a semester, but really um, who stay here for the whole study program, the whole bachelor, master, PhD. So you're providing support. How exactly would that uh, translate for students? Um, so for international students, we really support them from the moment they, not only the moment they arrive here, but really from before even. So if they know that they want to come to Graz and they, for instance, need help with residence permits, immigration authorities, um, we are also in contact with embassies, uh, so Austrian embassies and consulates. Um, we help them if they are unsure about the, um, the forms they have to complete. 
but also when they want to come to Graz and they don't know where to stay. So we help with um, accommodation. Um, we provide information on student health insurance. So everything that's around yeah, living in Graz, basically, when you come to a new city, a new country. Very interesting. I also heard you're doing some events and activities like yeah. What exactly would you do? Um, we do quite a bit. So we have two um, students from TU Graz who are um, organizing events and activities. So we have a monthly regulars table, for instance, um, that is taking place in the international house. So it's events like we have once a month, there's a game night or there's a movie night. We also do special events according to the season. So Christmas cookie baking or <laughs> some Easter egg painting, things like that. And um, we not only organize events in the International House, but we also um, make sure that the new students can get to know Graz and its surroundings. So we also do day trips to, I don't know, there's something coming up um, for an animal zoo this Saturday. We also have been going kart racing or going to a chocolate factory, for instance. And yeah, so we really want to make sure that new students can get to know Graz and its surroundings and city tours. <laughs> Very interesting. You talked about the International House. Yeah. What, what exactly is that? Um, it's basically also where the Welcome Center is located. And um, we have a quite, well, it's it's a house. <laughs> so um, the International Office Welcome Center, the office itself is located there. And we have like a lot of meeting spaces. So we have the International Launch where you can go spend time if you want to prepare for classes, prepare for exams, if you just want to meet some people, for instance. So it's um, not only for internationals, but for the whole Tio Graz community. And we also have um, places where you can really network even, or if you want to spend your lunch break at our place, um, you're free to go uh, to do so. So it's open from Monday to Friday and during the opening hours, everybody can just come by and spend time. Interesting. Um we also have some kind of buddy program, right? You want mm -hmm. to talk about that? Yeah. So um, as we noted, especially for international students, it can be a bit hard. Maybe if they are non-EU citizens coming from completely different countries, have never been here, the language is strange, they don't know the study program and anything. Um, we have this new welcome buddy program. So um, international students are matched with students of the same study program, but which have been to Theo Graz for a year or two already. And so they can yeah, give on some tips. They also get to know some people already. And it's, yeah, we try really to match them with students of the same study program. And normally we don't do one-on-one -on -one matchings, but really group, buddy groups, so that you can not only get to know one person, but maybe already some more people of your study program, some other fellow new international students. And yeah, just making sure that everybody's connected and well integrated. <laughs> Uh, Lisboa, did you also uh, partake in uh, those activities? Yes, I did. And I think Yasmin was one of the first persons which I met here at Tograt. And I highly recommend the meeting with Yasmin uh, when you start um, your master's or bachelor's here at Tograt. I also participated in the beginning in a lot of their weekly and monthly um, regular tables. So it's really a great chance for students to come together and get to know more people and not feel alone in Graz. And if you make an exchange semester, I can also recommend it. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, so I had a buddy and it was very helpful because it was a Brazilian who speaks also German. Mm -hmm. So this is very unique and you get to know very fast people. I played for the university, for institute, football as example. So it's very important, I would say. Also when you are studying at Theo Graz and go for six months to other country. Yeah, interesting. Uh, we also had some questions in the chat. So there was one question, uh, was the transition from Albania to, hard, uh, to Austria very hard uh, considering the difficulty of the college or was it harder in Austria or back home? I think that's very dependent. Uh, so I was doing my bachelor's business informatics. So that is a combination of business and informatics. And for me, it was a little bit difficult to adjust to software engineering and management since my major is data science. And I had, yeah, I had no knowledge about that before. I come from a software development background. So that was a little bit uh, difficult to adapt, but in general, also talking from other students from Albania that came here that have a, um, a more theoretical background like computer science, it was mentioned that if you have a background in computer science, it's easier, then I think it's not that difficult. It's more what Rom uh, Professor Roman also mentioned, that time management, um, organizing your studies, because in the Balkans at least, 
there is a different way of studying. Is more, the study is more structured, it's structured by the faculty, and here you have to decide for your own study, you have to decide for your own courses. So that I would say that that is a bit more difficult than the level of difficulties of studies. All right, thank you very much. Um, there's also a question. Um, uh, if you were starting at the university as a student who still takes preparatory courses in German, uh, and they're going to study software engineering and management. So is, is there something that you can do as a university student right, in, in this situation when you're still doing the German courses? In terms of classes that you can already take mm. or? Um, I think that was meant, mm. yes. Okay, because I think if you are doing some courses, I think you have to finish them first, but to be honest, better ask the registrar's office. <laughs> but right. I think you first really, if you go to the preparatory program, I think you have to finish that one first and only then you can actually take the regular courses. All right. Um, yeah, and there's also uh, the question what, what the difference between data science, intelligent systems and machine learning focus areas is. Maybe Roman, you can answer that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let me start with, with data science <laughs> because data science may also touch well, not only may, but that certainly does, does also touch machine learning. Because in, in data science, you are analyzing and studying the relationship of data, so observational data or data collected via studies, and some insights that you gain out of it. And you can gain these insights by just visualizing the data, quote unquote just, or you can apply machine learning for make predictions, and, and similar. So it's in, the, in that sense, for data science, machine learning plays the role more of a tool. And if you specialize more into machine learning areas, you really learn more about the nitty gritty details of the algorithms that, that really fuel um, machine learning. And then, then finally, if you look at inter, uh, intelligent systems, you get a different perspective again, where machine learning also plays, plays a role, but you're more taking the systems perspective over here. So there might be some, some intersections, there might be some joint courses, uh, but in the end, it's it's more the emphasis that that is important. Okay, well, thank you. I hope this answers your question. Um, so thank you very much for coming, everyone. Um, if you have any more questions, please feel free to ask them in the Discord. Uh, a colleague will answer them there, and then we will uh, end this for tonight. And if somebody wants still to see the same thing for biomedical engineering, uh, we will be back again uh, in about a quarter an hour. Thank you. Robotics, artificial intelligence, visual computing, and much more. In the bachelor's degree program in computer science, you will learn all about computer technologies and how to shape our digital future through IT. Focus areas such as software engineering, data science, machine learning, IT security, and many others offer a well-balanced and diverse education. Let's hear what our students say about it. IT is everywhere and it becomes more and more important. It is fascinating to learn how we can improve our everyday lives by means of information technology. IT security is a hugely dynamic topic. At DU Graz we learn from the best in their fields, with a great international reputation, even while still in the bachelor's degree program. Here at Tier Graz, the student teams are very successful in international game development, hacking or RoboCup competitions. Interested? Head over to tugratz.at and apply for admission to the bachelor's program in computer science now.
As a child, I loved adventure. I loved to explore virtual worlds. And at the time, I didn't know that one day I would create such worlds myself. My name is Joanna Pierker, and I'm a computer scientist focusing on research and education in game development. I studied software engineering at TU Graz, and this opened up new opportunities for me. I wrote my master thesis during my time at MIT in Boston. Then I came back to Graz, Austria's second city, and to TU Graz, a university with a great international reputation in technology and natural sciences, and a hub for successful cooperation with science and industry. I've worked on many projects that took me further, connected me with fantastic people, and projects that opened up new perspectives. I'm an assistant professor and teach students from all over the world. <laughs> Focusing on research and teaching that extends beyond my own department and carry out interdisciplinary work with colleagues from various fields of expertise. Smart production, electronics and sensor technology, e-mobility, BCI, AI, drones and robotics, digital building, cybersecurity, to name just a few. Areas that enable us to follow new paths together and to address key social issues and challenges of the future. So many colleagues who inspire me, give me thought-provoking inputs, and enable me to come up with new ideas and concepts. Because my job takes me all around the world. I love this mix of urban living and laid back atmosphere and grass. And being part of it is just great. What's your story? Thank you for joining us. Uh, this is the info session for your future in biomedical engineering, uh, where we will talk about the master's programs in that area. Uh, if you have questions for us, uh, we will answer them uh, at the end, and you can write them directly here in the YouTube chat, or uh, you can ask them in the Discord, uh, which is linked below. Um, I want to uh, introduce myself. I'm Martin Haider. I'm going to be the host for this session as well. And maybe you want to introduce yourselves. Yeah, my name is Tina. I have finished my master's degree around four weeks ago, and now I started or have started a PhD program. Hello, I'm Hermann Schafeta. I am the Dean of Studies of Biomedical Engineering. Yeah, and teacher, of course, also at the, in this program. And my name is Hus Yasmin. I work in the Wacom Center and we take care of international students. All right, uh, first we will show you a short image video about biomedical engineering and then we will get right into the discussion. Are you curious about how robotically assisted surgical systems work or how prosthetic devices are created in a 3D printer? With a thorough grounding in technology, medicine and science, the bachelor's degree program in biomedical engineering will teach you to use engineering techniques to address medical needs. Focus areas like medicine and natural sciences, electrical engineering, computer science, and many more offer a well-balanced and diverse education. Let's hear what our students say. What I especially like about biomedical engineering is the diversity of the education in technology, natural sciences, and medicine. So what's great about this degree is uh, the connection between electrical engineering and programming, but at the same time you get to learn about chemistry, anatomy and biology in detail. Graz is green, open-minded and lively. Packed with street art, bars and boutiques. Interested? Head over to tugratz.at and apply for admission to the bachelor's program in biomedical engineering now. The future is now. So, thank you for coming, everyone. Um, Hermann, you said you're the Dean of Studies. Uh, mm -hmm. What exactly is the Dean and what is your role at the TU Graz? Well, uh, as Dean of Studies, I am responsible for the curriculum, biomedical engineering. So I've been, I'm responsible that everything works fine, that courses are offered uh, in the right way, that especially mandatory courses are given uh, every year and that they obey certain rules. 
Uh, this is one thing. And the other important thing is f accreditations, for instance. So if there are equivalences, somebody uh, has accomplished uh, an, an exam at another university, and I have to check if this is equivalent to one in, ours, um, in, in our curriculum. So yeah. basically, you're for the student affairs, uh, everything is your, uh, your area. Yeah, not everything. Of course, the Army is, for instance, a welcome center, and so they offer a lot of additional services. Uh, but uh, I'm for the administrate. I'm, so to say, responsible for the administrative part. Mm. For biomedical engineering. For biomedical engineering, right. right. Uh, you want to give a short introduction to biomedical engineering? What, what exactly is it? Well, it's a good question, <laughs> indeed, because uh, it's, it's not so easy to define biomedical engineering. It's a, such a huge interdisciplinary area that it's maybe better to start from what should it be good for. I would say uh, it's engineering for solving problems in medicine and biology, essentially. And as you can imagine, this uh, is a very broad range of different disciplines which contribute. So uh, you have electronics, you have mechanical engineering, informatics. Uh, you should also know, of course, about uh, what medical doctors need. You should be able to talk to them. So physiology, a bit of biochemistry, cell biology should also be part of the program. And, um, of course, also regulatory affairs, safety issues, it's, it's a, a huge uh, area. And um, it's, a, it's a, so to say, a bridge discipline between uh, medical doctors, between medicine and biology, industry uh, producing the devices and uh, the healthcare system. So that may be a faint idea of what biomedical engineering should be. And accordingly, our, our curriculum is uh, very broad. Okay, how, how broad is it? Can you go into detail of, about a few of the majors? Well, I guess you know, because uh, <laughs> you had to go also through our bachelor's and uh, then the master's. Um, in, 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 uh, the, the question is, what do we offer in Graz, right? right because yeah. you cannot teach everything. It's impossible to, to uh, offer uh, the, the biomedical engineering. It's, it's full width. It's impossible. So uh, what we have here is biomechanics. What we have is healthcare engineering, neural engineering, um, instrumentation, sensors, and uh, medical imaging, and did I forget some, bi biomechanics, did I mention? Yeah, biomechanics also, and also bioinformatics, that's especially interesting. So, um, when you start studying, uh, so many people do that here in the bachelors, right? But they have to learn, of course, about mathematics, physics, biochemistry, physiology, uh, medical basics, I would say so, anatomy, physiology, and then electronics, um, mechanical engineering, informatics, so practically See, everything, right? Seems very broad, <laughs> yes. It's very broad, yes. Um, Tina, you said you st finished your studies. Uh, what, what program did you choose? What program did I choose? Um, for my major, I chose uh, biomedical imaging and sensing, I think it's called, mm -hmm. um, where the focus lies on um, image acquisition and also image uh, processing, of course. And for minor, I chose um, BCI, so brain computer interfacing, where the main focus lies on yeah, signal processing, maybe a bit machine learning, deep learning. Um, so, yeah. And did you like it? <laughs> Um, yeah, I really liked it. I really enjoyed uh, studying at TU Graz. I mean, as Hermann already said, it's a broad range of knowledge that you get, especially in the bachelor's. Uh, in the master's, you can yeah, focus on special areas, which I think it's, it's really great. So, yeah, I think it's a solid education, which I get from TU Graz. Is, is there any major or minor that you also looked at that you maybe would have done? Um, great question. Uh, maybe neuroscience, so as a major, major. However, I really like medical imaging. So I decided to make the major in medical imaging. All right. Um, you also work at Teograz now? You said you have a PhD. What are you doing exactly? 
Yeah, exactly. I mean, I also worked in my master's and bachelor's year here at TU Graz. So, for example, as a student assistant, where I supported uh, the professors in teaching and also as a project assistant, where I was uh, partly involved in project at TU Graz. And now I'm a university assistant, which also means that I support the professors in teaching. Uh, and I also do my own research um, and hopefully also write a dissertation about it. About teaching? Not about teaching, but about my uh, research focus, which ah. is medical imaging. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm sorry, it got confused there. No, I'm sorry. Um, Hermann, what, what exactly does the master's degree, uh, what makes it so special here? I mean, we talked about the majors and minors. Mm -hmm. um, what would you say are the main focus areas? Yeah, well, I already mentioned a little bit. I could uh, tell you the names of the majors which we offer here. So it's quite a, a good menu, I would say, quite a broad menu which we offer. Uh, this is um, um, biomechanics, simulation and uh, modeling. This is one of the majors. Then the second one is uh, instrumentation, uh, bio, uh, biomedical instrumentation and sensors. Then we have biomedical imaging and sensing, that's what you took. Then uh, there is health, um, no, uh, the, <laughs> the institute is healthcare engineering, but offering uh, the major on device design, safety and regulations. And then we have uh, uh, computational neuroscience. So these are the majors and uh, what I should mention is we have one minor which is uh, special. Uh, it's still a minor although we plan in the future to extend it to a major also this is bioinformatics. And uh, then there are, if I've counted correctly, 12 minors at the moment uh, which are more or less, you can choose them as complementary uh, program to a major or you can also design um, one narrow track, for instance, uh, biomedical instrumentation and sensors and uh, uh, medical electronics, if you would like to specialize even more or you could mm -hmm. complement uh, one major with something. What, what did you uh, choose as your minor? Uh, brain computer interface. Brain computer interface, okay, yeah. So um, that's also what you can do. So there's a lot of freedoms in, in a lot, specializing. Yeah. yeah, correct. So you can really put together a nice menu and I think that nearly everybody should find the combination uh, which, uh, which uh, corresponds to his or her interests. Mm -hmm. Um, if, if I want to start uh, with biomedical masters, mm. uh, what exactly would I have to know beforehand with being a, such a broad spectrum of knowledge required? Yeah, um, what we expect um, is that uh, you have a good basis in mathematics and physics, uh, then um, some knowledge on electrical engineering, electronics, some basics on mechanical engineering, so statics dynamics should be at, at least uh, known. So sure, for, for instance, if you would like to go to biomechanics, but to the biomechanics track, then you, of course you should know about uh, mechanical engineering. Then informatics, of course you should know at least basic programming. So you should have written your own uh, object oriented program at least once. Uh, because informatics, sure, is, is everywhere, so you cannot do without right, right. without that. Um, yeah, and uh, of course in the bachelors we offer some uh, medical basics, anatomy and physiology, biochemistry and some basics on cell biology. So it would be desirable that you have some of those basics, although of course uh, if you come from a uh, from a different field like electrical engineering, then you still may have a good match, but then you have uh, learned the other subjects, at least some basics on that. But it is possible if I'm uh, not exactly have done this field that I can start uh -huh. here and just uh, re um, learn the stuff that is required afterwards. Yeah, that's pr that's possible. Uh, uh, then that there is a uh, this is maybe a different story. This election uh, committee uh, will of course look at the match of your knowledge with uh, what we expect. 
Uh, but if there is something lacking, then we can uh, prescribe up to a certain uh, number of ECTS, we can prescribe that you um, do this or that exam so that you have at least a, uh, yeah, a, 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 an acceptable match. So while coming here, you just have to do some uh, bachelor's courses then? Yeah, this is quite probable the Yeah, that, that you have to adapt somehow. All mm. right. And if I've done uh, the master's degree, what exactly would I expect to be doing afterwards? Like, what are the career prospects? Well, ideally, I would expect that, of course, you work either as a design engineer uh, in, 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 in for, for designing me uh, medical products, medical devices or something like that. I see the biomedical engineer, especially uh, at um, where, where it comes to the assembly of different um, areas, so where you need this knowledge of, of the various aspects. So at this integrative point, uh, of course, not everybody uh, is landing there. Uh, some people may even mount their own, uh, their own uh, um, startup and produce uh, a device or whatever, or realize uh, uh, his her own idea of what the medical pro uh, of a special medical product. This is nowadays uh, not so difficult anymore because there are so many ideas, so many um, um, methods on the market where you could try to come up with something and many needs. Right. Yeah, and, and if you're having such uh, such a spectacular, uh, like if you're so focused on specific areas and if you have the broad knowledge of everything, mm. you can also expect to uh, uh, focus on a specific area that hasn't been covered before, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah, and then of course research. So what Tina, Tina has chosen this way, she would like to do her PhD. And uh, if that's interesting for you, sure, research is a wide area. And there are a lot of unsolved problems in medicine all the time. So that's one possibility. Or maybe uh, you could also uh, become uh, the, the, the safe, something like safety uh, safety's, uh, officer or something like that, where it's, it comes to, because safety regulations in medical engineering are extremely strict, mm -hmm. so very strict. And uh, every company uh, selling a, a, a medical product must have at least one person who knows about those aspects, about uh, safety regulations and that stuff. So also this is um, an area where you could land. All right. Um, maybe going back to you, Tina, what exactly did you like about your master's degree the most? What I liked the most? Yeah, I mean, you're really free in your choice. So, um, of course, you have some mandatory uh, lectures. Uh, however, these are quite the basics of your chosen major and minor. So that should be uh, okay. Um, however, you have still a lot of uh, lectures which you can choose by your own. Uh, and I really enjoy that because then you yeah, find out where you would like to be an expert in um, and study what you want to do. And that's quite nice. Yeah. Was there one specific lecture that stood out to you? Um, well, every lecture which has uh, medical imaging included. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so for example, I don't know how you call it, uh, image, image reconstruction in biological and medicine, I think it's called, um, for example. So just uh, Interesting. And what, what has there been some challenges or what was the difficulties that you had to overcome? Well, difficult, I mean, a challenging time, I think, for mostly every student is right at the beginning of the studies. So uh, you move in a foreign uh, city, you live uh, first time in your life alone maybe, and uh, try somehow to survive the beginning of your studies <laughs> where several information is hitting you. So uh, that's quite challenging. Uh, however, if you have a good time management, for example, then you can overcome this challenging time. All right. Um, we also, uh, I also know that you won the Dean's List Scholarship. Uh, this is some extraordinary achievement. How, how did you get this? How did I get this? So maybe uh, 
Well, maybe you want to explain what the Dean's uh, yeah, List is. Yeah, what the is. Dean's List is. Um, so the Dean's List features the top 5% of students in their respective study and semester, I think. Um, so, which means that if you are on the Dean's List, then you are a quite good student. Um, yeah, how did I achieve that? Uh, as I said before, time management. So good time management is uh, maybe uh, necessary for a good student. I don't know, uh, at least in my case. And yeah, winning the scholarship was quite amazing, of course, to be lucky enough to win it. Um, so yeah. And um, all right. Um, now we want to go to the bio labs. Um, do you have any research cooperations with with the TU grads? Um, we. What, what exactly are the bio labs? Maybe starting out. Well, whatever you would call bio labs, we have a lot of labs, of course, in our uh, in our field. Uh, and of course, when you ask for corporations, yes, sure, you need a lot of corporations. You cannot do research on your own anymore. It's impossible. You need need corporations inside the university. You need corporations internationally, of course. And uh, we have uh, several labs uh, in our area in the biomedical engineering field. Um, for instance, um, we have an excellent biomechanics lab where people investigate the mechanical properties of tissues. Um, and they do testing of these uh, tissues, so vessels, uh, heart tissues, such stuff. And this is this is one of the best uh, lab, uh, best equipped labs in Europe. Uh, so it's really amazing. And students can have uh, access there during, for instance, their master's thesis, or maybe if they are good already at bachelor's uh, thesis, um, where they come into contact with all these uh, machineries, with these apparatuses, which are their microscopes, uh, testing machines for the strength. Uh, by Excel um, and, and really sophisticated stuff. So it's a, a very good lab. Then we have a cell physiology, let us let me call it electrophysiological lab uh, at the Institute of Healthcare Engineering, where they do um, experiments with non-excitable cells. So about nerve cells, everybody knows they are electrically active, but their electrical activity of non-excitable cells is not so well understood, is uh, poorly investigated. And they have an excellent lab with patch clamp equipment and uh, they do fancy experiments with also optical stimulation of nerve cells. Uh, so it's really exciting. Uh, well, what else do we have? An imaging, yeah, an imaging. Also, we have our own lab. We have our own um, research scanner, an MR3 Tesla MRI scanner. Um, and uh, we have access to that. We share that with the psychologists from another university, from Karl Franzens University. But we do a lot of fancy experiments in their own house with this scanner. So this is also marvelous because uh, this is a really huge and, and uh, expensive machine. So it's good to have access to that. So there's also a lot of practical knowledge at, at hand here, right? Yeah, sure, sure, yeah. Um, we also have a special lab, the, the Brain Computer Interface Lab, get, uh, led by Gernot Müller Putz. We have yeah. prepared a short video, which we would like to show you. Welcome to the lab of the Institute of Neural Engineering, and I'm happy to show you our lab now. So let's start with this one here. This is a measurement box where we do electroencephalogram measurements. Do you see here? This is an electromagnetic shield box which also dampens the noises from outside. What we do here, to come a bit closer, maybe, is that we position participants of studies in here and they follow an experimental design presented on the screen here. For example, they, people have to imagine a movement of the right hand or count numbers or do any other cognitive task, for example, and we record brain signals. And the recording of the brain signals, this happens outside of the box, where we uh, are here located. So we have here the operator seat. You see the many screens here where they operate the experimenter, the operator is the word from the movie Matrix, where the uh, experimenter sees exactly the same setup inside, uh, also the brain signals are there, and um, so we can do these studies in a, in a quite nice way. What I want to show you also is how we conduct the uh, 
for example, how we record EEG signals. So this is uh, happening in the following. So we have the brain here. So the brain is in here in our head. You all know that. Um, and we want to study the signals generated by the brain. We can do that with EEG, the electroencephalogram, as I said earlier. So we, for example, apply such uh, EEG tap to a participant. Yeah, we move that, put it here uh, in a nice way. And then we uh, use such electrodes, for example, and connect this here and plug this into an amplifier. The amplifier uh, records the signal and transfers it into the digital world to a computer where we can further on process the whole uh, system. We, for example, are very interested in uh, the generation of movement and uh, how the brain is generating movement so that we can use it for rehabilitation purposes. So, for example, when we move over here, I have a system here which um, uh, allows us to uh, record the movements of arms uh, and hands uh, so we can uh, we can record the movement of the shoulder, the elbow, the rotation even of the forearm, even the grip uh, strength can be measured. Uh, this is a rehabilitation device initially, but we use it for recording all the joint movements. So we have the kinematics, the movement parameters, which we can uh, uh, register additionally to, for example, brain signals and then study what's going on in the brain when a person is moving this arm. What we learn from that uh, will uh, further continue in another brain-computer interface application where we use this information to generate a model that people will be able to control a robotic arm. This could be important for people with a high paralysis, for example, of the spinal cord injury. And so we uh, have the, such a robotic system and our aim is that people, just by thinking on their movement, can, uh, can move that robot arm uh, back and forth and so on um, and uh, to also, for example, uh, grab something and to feed themselves um, which were, they were not possible with themselves uh, because of the injury. This is one of our main things. To do all that, we need to really properly understand uh, the brain functions. And so we are using more techniques and I want to show you another thing here. So uh, to do functional brain imaging, we combine several systems. So we record the brain signals, for example, as I have shown you earlier. Then after the recording or before, we measure the positions of the electrodes exactly to this individual here so that we know exactly the 3D position of the electrode and where the brain signal comes from. And then we also send this person to the magnetic resonance imaging, uh, to the tube, we have it here at the, at the university, uh, make MRI pictures, and then we combine all the information we have. And for example, we can uh, receive such patterns, uh, movement patterns from individuals. You see these brains are all individual people and they have their individual brain pattern. And so we can study, for example, how movement is generated and how we can make it possible that the brain computer interface system can, for example, be used to control such a robotic arm. If you want to know more about this, so uh, we have also uh, YouTube channels, there is a Discord server uh, where you get answers uh, from members from the faculty, but also from us, so we are happy to give you further information. All right, welcome back. Um, I want to remind you again, if you have any questions, you can ask them in the YouTube chat or we'll answer them at the end. So um, I have another question for you, Herman. Um, what exactly are opportunities for students to develop their own projects? Like we have seen a lot of labs. Are there labs for students as well? Yeah, uh, I think that's a very important thing. Uh, that students have access to uh, space where they can do their own projects, where they can... Uh, it, it's really important, hands-on is really important, I would say. And uh, what we, we have uh, several possibilities uh, for that. First of all, we, we have what is called students' teams. 
uh, for instance, uh, there is the BCI um, racing team that, that there are people who are in cooperation with Gernot Miller Putz, whom he saw just before. Uh, they uh, develop their own algorithms there for, for instance, processing brain signals and uh, steering some devices or something like that. S and uh, there are competitions, yearly competitions, where people from Europe uh, uh, meet and uh, then they have, to, then they, the best algorithms are selected. Um, so that's uh, even that it's an in initiative which is even uh, supported by the university with a little bit of money also. These are the students' teams. Then uh, what we um, also what, uh, last week we opened what we call Open BME Lab, because uh, the idea was well, uh, if a student has a good idea, wants to build his her own device. Uh, but has no access to lab space, no lab at home. Uh, so they should get some opportunity to access, uh, I don't know what they need, maybe an oscilloscope, a function generator, or some Raspberry Pi, or I don't know what, that they should have uh, the opportunity to do so and therefore we opened a lab uh, where they are um, where they, they find this equipment and where they can book some uh, time slots where they have access to those devices and can do their own projects. And may it, uh, maybe there are different uh, groups of students also, some who just want to improve their knowledge on measurement technology relevant for biomedical engineering, uh, or others who really already have some clever ideas would like to try something out. Uh, either they do that in groups or individually. So that's what we have in mind and uh, we would like to support that. That's what we offer or there was uh, in, in my inst in, in the institute where I, I am working, we have a small group of students who uh, built their own MRI scanner. So it's a small tabletop MRI scanner, which originally has been developed at MIT. Uh, we reproduced it, but then we would like to further develop our own ideas on that. And uh, it's really, this is a, a small device. It's not very, well, small. It's like that size, right. but it contains all parts of an MRI scanner, from the magnet to radio frequency unit, everything. And uh, this is also fun, right? You built your own or M NMR spectrometer. So that's what we offer, yes, uh, in small groups of students, this, this can be done. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So if I'm a new student and I want to develop my own thing, I can go to this open lab or go to the MRI team and just work with them. Yeah, right. right. Or also, not, not only in our institute, also other institutes are offering that, of course. Right. So you can. Mm. Interesting. Okay. Um, as you see, there's a lot of uh, things going on at Theograd. Um, maybe I want to ask you, Tina, why did you start to study biomedical engineering here? Why did I start? Well, um, basically, I had two decision factors. So first of all, uh, even at the beginning of my studies, I was quite sure to do something in medical imaging. And we have an institute of biomedical imaging, so that fits very well. Uh, we also have, a, as Hermann said, a free Tesla MRI scanner. So if you would like to make the master in, or do the master at TU Graz, then you, of course, can also play around a bit with the scanner, which is quite cool. <laughs> and wow. the other thing was the reputation of the university. And this is also quite um, important for me, or it was important for me. And the reputation is, yeah, even international, very good. Uh, here at Graz, we have great researchers, so yeah. Is, is there anything else that makes TU Graz special for you or is maybe maybe the city as well? Um, the city, of course, yeah, the city, Graz is, Graz is a nice city. Um, however, what I think personally was very special at here at Graz was this transition between um, teaching and research. So if you look at the curriculum, then we have um, around 30 ECTS for our master thesis, which means that you have one semester time focusing on your master thesis. And in this time, you will yeah, maybe the first time in your life see what everyday research means here at the university. And that was quite nice because I meet a lot of colleagues who are way further than I in their studies. For example, they are PhD students or even postdocs. Uh, nevertheless, they always supported me uh, in my master thesis, gave me great advices, um, even for my future. 
And it was, uh, of course, one big reason why I decided to make or do a PhD here at TU Graz. So, yeah, that... Uh, is, is there also the sense that you have really become the master of, of, uh, of your specific uh, thing, of your specific uh, thesis topic? Oh, what you like, like, do, do you feel as, uh, as if you know everything about your thesis topic or more than other people would? Uh, yeah, of course. I field. mean, you can focus one semester only on this topic, so you, uh, you know something about this topic. Uh, uh, you also write a thesis about it. So, yeah, of course, I now am a bit of an expert <laughs> in this respective uh, topic yeah, that I did. So, um, you have also done the bachelor's degree. Uh, did you do it here or did you do it in another university? Uh, no, the bachelor's degree I did here at TU Graz, yeah. And if somebody else is coming here from, from another university, would you still recommend it come here? Yeah, of course. I mean, uh, a big advantage I already gave, right? Because this, this transition between uh, research and, and teaching. However, there are a lot of other things uh, you can do on this university. Um, and yeah, of course, do the master thesis at TU Graz. Uh, it's, you won't regret it, I would say. So yeah. All right. Um, then I have enough, some other questions for you as well. You want to introduce your faculty in a few words? Like, what exactly does your faculty do that other faculties maybe don't? Well, yeah, that's also a bit special, I would say, because uh, we are a part of the faculty for computer science and biomedical engineering. So uh, you'll see there are two fields to, uh, which joined together. Uh, this is computer science and biomedical engineering. This is really a good thing because computer science now, it, 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 it's the basis for nearly, or basis is one of the uh, major disciplines for nearly everything. So I know in, uh, in imaging, nothing works without uh, sophisticated algorithms, inverse problems, whatever. So you need informatics a lot. Uh, it's the same in um, in neural engineering, when you look at uh, the, the video of Gernot, then it's uh, the signal processing, this uh, real-time signal processing, which you need nothing without informatics, right? Uh, and the same in, in biomechanics, when you have to simulate things or, or healthcare engineering, bioinformatics. That's especially interesting because this is then uh, a, a discipline which uh, is, this is really, uh, half informatics, half biomedical engineering, and a good deal also linked to biology, to cell biology. Uh, extremely exciting. They need uh, very, very uh, sophisticated algorithms to identify. So, for instance, what they identify, methylation of the genome. This is a, a very interesting topic. Uh, you know, maybe methylation, this is the... the, the uh, the mechanism by which the genome uh, controls uh, the, the activity of different uh, parts of the genome, so silenced, uh, silences different parts of the genome, which, which are switched off, right? Mm -hmm. And um, this methylation is not yet very, very well understood, and it plays a, a, an important role, for instance, in cancer development, uh, where this methylation is altered somehow. And um, in order to discover what is going on there, to understand the basic processes there, you need a lot of informatics. So this is really the right place. Uh, so mixing those two uh, disciplines is a very natural thing, I would say. And uh, this make, I would say this makes our faculty special, yes. Interesting, right. Um, is there something maybe you also hear from students? Um, like, what, what do students say to you? Are there some challenges with doing those degrees here at the, the biomedical engineering? Well, I mean, the, 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 the large interdisciplinarity by itself is a challenge, right? You have to learn many different things and integrate them. I guess uh, you also can confirm that. Yeah, so you had sure. to go through many yeah. disciplines and and uh, combine those uh, things. Um, is, is there I, some discipline people don't expect to be in there? Yeah, sure. Yeah, that that's important. Uh, thank you for this question. It's very important. 
because um, people uh, listening or watching this uh, stream now, they should uh, not get false expectations of this curriculum. So it's of course an engineering curriculum. It, that there is a lot of uh, um, mathematics and physics basic. So if you don't like mathematics and physics, well, it's hard to do. So, uh, right, this right. is a challenge that you, you need really, you need to tackle all those things you, and you need, um, as I told you before, many engineering basics. Mm -hmm. And this is maybe really a challenge. Yeah, but it, on, on the other hand, it's extremely fascinating. So if you can cope with that, it's fascinating. All right. Um, do we have a lot of international students in your master's degree? Yeah, I would say, yeah, uh, we have there, of course, there are two types. There are the, the exchange students like Erasmus Overseas program. There we have, uh, I don't know, uh, between 11 and 15 per year. And uh, international students, regular students who go through the um, admission, through the process, admission yeah. process. There we have uh, between 10 and 15 percent of our master students. So it's not a huge amount, but uh, it's already relevant. Um, and it's increasing. All right. Do you know where those people are mostly from? Is there some specific countries? Yes, I would say most which we admit finally come from the, well, yes, uh, Southeast Europe. Um, we have some people also from uh, yeah, Iran, that region. There are people we get, um, yeah, mostly from the South, Southeast European region. Okay, and if I'm, uh, and all, all of these international students watching right now, what exactly would they need to do to be admitted as an international student here? Well, they have to go through the admission procedure that um, you have to go to the web page. The uh, call is open already now uh, since yesterday, I think, until 15th of December. Uh, you have to submit um, several documents there, uh, some documentation. and. Um, What's uh, important uh, for well, I uh, what, what, what's important for me because I am the the head of the selection committee. There is a selection committee, and um, I'm chairing that. And uh, what for us is important are three documents. This is the record, of course. Then there is the motivation letter and the CV. The curriculum vitae. These are the important things we are studying and uh, looking at. Um, and there's of course other documentation which uh, goes to other uh, uh, checking, uh, pre-checking uh, through study service, for instance. Right. Um, the list of all the things you need, uh, you're going to find as well uh, on the web page where uh, we also we have all the information for you. Um, maybe we're also going to a little insight of what studying at TU Graz or in Graz itself is, big, is like. Uh, Graz being the second largest city in Austria and we also have a short clip prepared. That's me at three, here at five and there at 16. Technology has fascinated me ever since I was a child. It was clear to me early on. I wanted to study, achieve something in life and work for a better future. I wanted my future to be international with an interdisciplinary focus. Graz University of Technology offers a wide range of degree programs in science and technology. The ideal place for technology enthusiasts like me. I'd made up my mind and it was clear to me where it would start. So I moved to Graz, Austria's second city, my first home of my own, my new home base. Graz is so lively and exciting. It was a whole new feeling for me. So much culture, a green city, a student city, so many new faces. Sounds, smells, and impressions. So many things to see and do. And then, things really took off. TU Graz, overwhelming to begin with, located right in the center of town. You can feel it, 
research history has been written here for centuries. Everywhere on campus, in all the different faculties and institutes, you can meet with students and lecturers from all over the world. Incredibly large, small, electrifying, smart, green, futuristic, artistic projects. Specialist fields and disciplines I had no idea about. I absorbed and explored everything. These first days at Graz University of Technology opened my eyes to a world with new possibilities, research-led, with a practical focus and innovative learning technologies. I got insights into different fields, learned how they're connected. I got to know great people from various disciplines. We worked together in study groups and celebrated our successes together. We built networks for the future in one of the many student teams and made friends for life. I decided to study at Graz University of Technology and I'd do it all again. What's your story? All right, diving more into the topic of international students, we also have Yasmin Hus, who can tell us a lot about uh, the stuff the international office does. So maybe want to introduce yourself again and talk about your role at the international office. Yep. Um, so my name is Jasmine. Um, I work in the Welcome Center and we take care of international students, staff and guests that come to TU Graz. And when speaking of international students, it's really students who don't stay here for exchange semester, but really to pursue their bachelor, master or PhD at TU Graz. All right, and you provide guidance. How exactly would that work? Yeah. Um, so if students decide to come to TU Graz or if they're interested in studying at TU Graz, um, we provide assistance really from the very beginning. Um, if they receive an admission letter, then we can help them to apply for the residence permit, for instance, so they need to get in contact with Austrian embassies or consulates. And we provide assistance on that. Um, so we can help you if you have some issues with the different um, formalities. We also check forms if you want to. Um, we also provide assistance on everything that is around living in Graz. So um, if you look for an accommodation, if you need a student health insurance, if you're unsure about the public transport um, that exists in Graz, so everything really that is new and that is non-academic. So everything academic is taken care of by the Dean of Studies or the Registrar's Office, what's administrative and everything that is non-academic is our topic. So as soon as somebody gets an admission letter, they would, yes. they would talk to you. Um, what else do you do? Do you organize some activities? Yeah, so we have um, two students who organize events for other students. Um, so it's really events that students are interested in because they're, yeah, <laughs> it's students organizing events for students. Um, so we um, have the International House where we have a monthly regulars table. So it's every month is something different. It can be a video, uh, a game night, it can be a movie night. Um, we have um, special events according to the season, so we even have um, Christmas cookie baking coming up, um, some Easter egg dyeing, things like that. And we really like to use this space for all different kinds of events. And then we also do, of course, other things, so not only the house itself, but also um, this Saturday coming up, um, we have a trip to an animal zoo um, close by. Mm. We also have been to um, a chocolate uh, factory, so um, very common in Syria, and some other events around Graz and just in Graz in general to get to know the city. We do city tours, um, just some hikings in the city and a lot of sportive or cultural events to yeah, get to know you in your home. Right, so uh, a real welcome office. Yeah. Um, what exactly is the International House? You talked about it. Shortly. Yeah, so the International House is basically the building where also our office is located. Um, uh, we, the Welcome Center, also are in this office. So we have some common spaces where students can simply come by. Or not only students, not only internationals, it's really for the whole TOGATS community. So every staff member, student, national, international can come by if they have time, if they want to meet some other people, um, if they are interested in international encounters, of course. So we have spaces where students can go to or staff can go to. And we have an um, international launch where we have board games, we have table soccer, we have a Nintendo Switch. So you can really mm -hmm. spend your break there if you want to. 
Um, but you can also simply prepare your light lunch there. So we have a kitchen, we have a really nice garden where you can sit outside. And we have also spaces where you can, I don't know, prepare your, for classes, prepare for exams. So we have a lot of students coming by and then simply study the whole day. And we even have some rooms that you can book as international student or as two Graz member, basically. So if you um, need a space for your project work, for instance, there's also space there. And there's coffee and free all the time for free. <laughs> so mm -hmm. so <laughs> maybe could, also good for studying. <laughs> could be very important for people who uh, don't have the biggest spaces. Uh, yeah, living. for instance. Yeah. yeah. Um, we also have a buddy program. You want to talk about that a yeah. little bit? Yeah. Um, so one and a half years ago or so, we have introduced the new Welcome Buddy program. So, so far it has already been in charge for the international students being on exchange, but not so much for the regular students yet. And so we've introduced that and we really want to make sure that new international students get well integrated and also get to know already some senior students. So we have this buddy program where senior students are then matched with new international students and it's really in buddy groups. So it's not one on one matches, but normally you also get to know some other fellow internationals who are in the same study program and are starting. Normally we have groups of, I don't know, five to eight people, depending on which study program you sign up for. And this semester um, we have matched around 90 people. So that's, well, that's quite a, a lot. Bit. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, thank you so much. And um, Tina, what do you think? Is there something you want to say? Why should people start at Theo Graz? Why should people? Yeah, I mean, maybe uh, let's talk a bit about Graz. So the city Graz. Um, it's a very nice city. Um, I think. Um, it is it is quite a small town compared to other uh, cities however the advantage at least uh, i think the benefit of graz is that um, you all have a, or you have this uh, advantages of a city uh, however within 10 to 20 minutes you are outside of graz and in nature so we have great nature we have lakes we have forests we have mountains if you would like to go hiking for example um, so a lot to do in graz uh, it's a student city, so many student-related uh, events, of course. Also many concerts, if you are more the city person. Um, so yeah, Graz is great, I think. So. Yeah, I've heard, I heard about a, a fifth of all the people in Graz are students, something like that. Yeah, it could be. <laughs> it's, it's quite a big number, quite a big number. Um, what is your favorite to do, thing to do? Um, well, I'm personally a very sporty person, so I love doing sports. I love to get on the bike and go for a ride. So I really enjoy being on the countryside of Graz that fast. Um, however, as I said before, there are many things uh, and surely for everyone something uh, here in Graz yeah, to enjoy the lifetime. There's also uh, Uzi Kurse, uh, courses uh, with the University Sports Institute, uh, which any student can take. Uh, also recommend a lot of them. There is everything from archery to rowing, I think. Uh, also a lot of choices there. I think you can even start skiing. So if you don't know skiing yet, then you can yes. also do like um, beginners courses for skiing or stuff like that. So it's, you can really do everything. Yeah, it could, it could be very good. Really cool. Nice. Um, there's also a quick question about the master's thesis. If I can get it to work. <laughs> Technical difficulties. Um, a question from the auditory. Yes. Uh, mm. When can we? Exp I can't scroll. Uh, should I say? Uh, when yes, can please. we expect the major in bioinformatics? I mean, this topic is at least in my opinion, or in my option, a future future topic. Yeah. So That's a question. When is when is the master uh, in? What did you say in? In bioinformatics, in bioinformatics, bioinformatics right. available. The yeah, uh, in, 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 we wanted to have it already in the past, but uh, due to some uh, personal issues, so we need to um, to implement a second professorship in order to really do that because we need more capacity, and this is expected uh, in the next year. So I hope that we can mount this uh, major soon. Um, however, it depends on, on, on uh, what we get out uh, in approximately one year. I mean, the, yeah, and it's, it's correct. It's an extremely important uh, topic and uh, we would like to expand that. 
Um, already the minor is quite interesting, I would say. Uh, so if you do the minor, there is a lot of uh, very um, exciting topics already, which you can uh, and and, and uh, courses you can already take now. But uh, I cannot promise that uh, we will have it in. Well, if everything goes well, then maybe we have one in three years, four years or so. So because it has to be implemented, right? Uh, the, the curriculum has to be changed and before we have to get uh, a new professor in that area. The second one, which uh, who supports uh, Laila Taher, who is our bioinformatics professor right now. Is there an option to start right now doing a different major and then switch? The, uh, if, if it comes to that, that the new course is going to be supported? Uh, yeah, well, I cannot give a very clear recommendation on that, but uh, usually there is overlap between different majors. So a major usually does is not completely isolated from the other ones. And uh, if you choose one where there is good uh, informatics, uh, there are courses on informatics, uh, and there is a good link to cell physiology, maybe yes, uh, I cannot clearly answer that at the moment, but normally that that's something I have to manage if somebody says, okay, I need some very special uh, program, I need a, uh, an individual major, we rarely do that, but if there is a good reason to mount an individual major, then this could happen, and especially in such transition procedures, yes, then uh, I would try to find a solution but this, I think this has to be discussed individually then. Somebody starts and then says, oh, we have not a major, then I would have to find a solution. Yeah. Right. Well, um, I don't see any more questions. So thank you all for joining. Thank you on the couch for also coming here. Uh, if you have any further questions, uh, better ask them in the Discord. The link is below. Uh, our colleagues will answer them. And thank you for joining. Are you curious about how robotically assisted surgical systems work or how prosthetic devices are created in a 3D printer? With a thorough grounding in technology, medicine and science, the bachelor's degree program in biomedical engineering will teach you to use engineering techniques to address medical needs. Focus areas like medicine and natural sciences, electrical engineering, computer science, and many more offer a well-balanced and diverse education. Let's hear what our students say. What I especially like about biomedical engineering is the diversity of the education in technology, natural sciences and medicine. So what's great about this degree is uh, the connection between electrical engineering and programming, but at the same time you get to learn about chemistry, anatomy and biology in detail. Graz is green, open-minded and lively. Packed with street art, bars and boutiques. Interesting? Head over to tugrads.at and apply for admission to the bachelor's program in biomedical engineering now. The future is now.